a multinational corporation whose entire business model revolves around profiting off of and conquering its entire industry is attempting to monopolize PC gaming too? Who the hell would do such a thing? Microsoft, that's who. Yeah. And while it's pretty obvious at this point that they have a stranglehold on the PC gaming community, a big name in the industry is now calling them out publicly for some shady shit that he alleges that they're doing, which takes them far beyond simply being the platform used and into the realm of monopolizing access to the games themselves. Bad. Yeah, now this is all coming from an article posted on The Guardian from the founder of Epic Games, Tim Sweeney, who says that, quote, with its new Universal Windows Platform initiative, Microsoft has built a closed platform within a platform into Windows 10 as the first apparent step towards locking down the consumer PC ecosystem and monopolizing app distribution and commerce. Bad. Yeah. Basically, if you want to use their platform, you'll be forced to sell your product through the Windows Store <laughs> and hand over a substantial part of your potential revenue to Microsoft. Pay the tax. Yeah. He went on to say that, quote, Microsoft is structuring its operating system to advantage its own store while unfairly disadvantaging competing app stores as well as developers and publishers who distribute games directly to their customers. Yeah. He also continued, the specific problem here is that Microsoft's shiny new universal Windows platform is locked down, and by default, it's impossible to download UWP apps from the websites of publishers and developers to install them, update them, and conduct commerce in them outside of the Windows Store. He continues again. <laughs> it's true that if you dig far enough into Microsoft settings burying UI, you can find a way to install these apps by enabling side loading, but in turning this off by default, Microshaft is unfairly <laughs> disadvantaging the, the competition. Bigger picture, this is a feature Microsoft can revoke at any time using Windows 10 forced update process. This is some Apple shit. Yeah, now far be it from us to ever be confused as to why Microsoft would do something like this to the gaming landscape. We're just happy that there's someone out there taking time like Tim Sweeney attempting to keep them honest and point out glaring loopholes in there to what the general public would assume are seemingly innocuous new platforms. But let's move on guys. Remember when we told you that EA was leaving E3 behind and it wouldn't be bringing its massive product demo area to the show floor this year? Well, surprise, another company is following suit. Uh, E3 is definitely gonna look a lot lighter this year because in addition to EA leaving, Activision is now saying they'll be foregoing their spot on the floor and instead opting to let the studios behind the game show them off at their own respective booths. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever seen Activision set up at an E3 convention before, you'll know this opens up a lot of space, yeah. despite the fact that for the most part all the gigantic publisher booths were just huge areas to watch trailers in. They should put a little ball pit in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> charge a, charge one dollar to what play in the ball pit. What was that place called again? Uh, it's like, not WonderCon. No, uh, DashCon. Dash they take take a page from the DashCon book. <laughs> charge one dollar to go in the giant ball pit. <laughs> Those EA with EA and Activision There's gone. Be so much space. Yeah, just I'm like, excited this year. This is gonna be the best E3 ever. So much <laughs> yeah. fucking room. All these lanes of traffic. They need to do this at Comic Con too. Yeah. Get them out. Just get rid of it. Yeah. They need to extend Comic Con's convention center deep out into the bay. Yeah. I think War Gaming might be pulling their booth too. Oh, really? they have a the War and all that. Oh, oh wow. Well, they have the, a huge booth every year because it's all gotta, like. They gotta pull their booth to afford the crazy techno after show that they throw yeah, over here. Yeah, yeah. Please invite us. Anyways, we actually think that EA's idea is better than all of this because they are making it into a fan event. And while E3 has primarily revolved around press since its inception, times have changed. And fan expos around the country and around the world, like PAX for example, have almost eclipsed E3 and its snooty fucking attitude. Um, this is f for journalists <laughs> and and industry insiders only. Uh, <laughs> Get out of here, you that's, little, that's you little. How I read the emails in that voice. Yes. You have been selected for Ooh, E3 yes. press. This is not a fan event. There will be no fandom here. So anyway, maybe all this moving and shaking will eventually make the people behind the event. Shucking and jiving. Open up their doors and their minds to the fans. Because otherwise, who gives a shit? No. The internet exists. We don't need to have conventions. I don't know why we even bother going there. The whole fucking thing's online. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean like it's it's we don't need these There's no reason to have. We it. don't need these for the sole purpose of announcing, promoting or marketing games. PewDiePie will do all of that for us. <laughs> I only <laughs> I only play games that PewDiePie talks about. I got scared there. Yeah. Whoa. Is PewDiePie here? Hey, have Did you watched someone the show yet? I've no, I haven't show. watched it yet. I will get to I'm it. I'm sure it's fun. <laughs> 
Speaking of actual games, let's talk about them because after what seemed like delay after delay after delay, No Man's Sky finally has an official release date. Yeah. And they swear it's not gonna change. No guys. eating tweets for me. For me. We promise. Yeah. I thought that was the division. <laughs> It'll be released on PC <laughs> and PC4. PC4? PC4. PC4. Oh, it's the next gen PS. Four PCs yeah. right after E3. Yeah. PC, PS4, E3, June 21st, 2016, and will uh, it'll most likely disappoint <laughs> basically anyone yeah. who's letting the hype of this infinite number of possibilities cloud the fact that there has to be a good game hidden within the options. Yeah. I don't know. It could could well end up like Spore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey, kids. You know what you need more of? Choices. Yeah. Make all these choices. I, I, mean, all, I, I don't even like okay, the game looks great. I think it's gonna be fun, but I also have no idea what the game's about. It's, aside from landing on random planets and naming them and the beings on those planets after yourself, like who the fuck gives a shit that Ricky for the Winosphere is like a planet? Go way me. Out the, <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's my just planet. Of, it's like literally built for millennials. Like, look, I have my own planet, and I named all these creatures after me and my family. It's got a little tugs flag on it. <laughs> yeah, finally, put, put the tugs flag in it. <laughs> we gotta get a tug put flag. Put a tugs in flag in No Man's Sky. Yeah, great. Anyways, I actually have some good gaming news that I brought in for Tug's show and tell because one of my favorite games for the past decade or so that for some reason or another everyone fucking hated is actually getting remastered and re-released uh, and I couldn't be happier about it. That game, Dead Island. Oh no! <laughs> really? You didn't like it? That's a surprise. It was alright. Anyways, as far as zombie survival RPG FPS games are concerned, this game actually played fairly well and de definitely didn't take itself too seriously, which led to a really fun playthrough and a, honestly, the best part about this was the co-op, uh, in addition to having obviously one of the best gaming trailers of all time. It was a good trailer. It was good. Uh, when I think back about recent games in the past decade or so, one of the best co-op experiences I had was on Dead Island. Wow, there you go. Anyways, the new Definitive Collection features higher resolution textures, improved character models and lighting, new motion blur effects, and something called horizon-based ambient occlusion. 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 Fancy, it's fancy either way. It's French. <laughs> it's a French game. It will be released on May 31st for around 40 bucks. So there you go, I'm the only one that cares. By the way, now I forgot to put it in, but uh, Oculus like totally threw shade at uh, Apple yesterday saying like, yeah, we'll make a Oculus VR when Apple can build a solid machine. Oh, that can like run it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. so there you go. I, has anyone actually benchmarked that? Because like... No, he said their GPU isn't strong enough. Mm, that might be true. I, I remember like, all the a lot of the people who were doing early dev kit Oculus stuff were all doing it on Macs, so that's interesting. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> but uh, yeah, whatever. Let's talk about everyone's favorite video game genre based on overwhelming statistics and data. Bobas. Yeah. yeah. Remember that company that we were just talking about? Epic Games! The one famous for titles like Gears of War 1, 2, and 3, as well as the Unreal series and Engine? Well, they're doing a MOBA too. Sure. As money. <laughs> yeah. And you're invited to play the beta for a fee. Yes. <laughs> So the game is called Paragon, and oh, good. it has nothing to do with Rob Talbert's company. It's more <laughs> like Smite than League of Legends, but we've seen and read that it kind of pulls inspiration from a lot of different sections of the genre. Don't say anything, Shibby. I know you have a lot to say about this. Uh, but since Shibby uh, is, is only doing a review on this show, we'll go to Kotaku writer Nathan Grayson, Ooh. great name, uh, who described it as big old MOBA stew. And he says this, Perspective-wise, it's most like Smite with its pulled-in camera and action game-inspired mechanics, but it also draws on Dota 2, general complexity, last hitting, League of Legends, big jungle, and Heroes of the Storm, team-oriented mechanics. That's just to name a few. It's also got a broth of genre comfort food, whatever that means. Slow moving creeps, a multi-tiered laning phase, matches that usually run for 30 to 45 minutes, and a host of familiar heroes. It sounds delicious. <laughs> sounds like a delicious stew. You got a stew going, baby. He just took the bones of yeah. whatever was left from the other MOBA games, threw in a potato and some carrots, and baby, you got a stew going. So we'll leave a link to his full preview of the game in our description, but you get the gist of it. So just how do you play it? Well, you need to purchase the Founders Pack for 20 American dollars, and that'll give you access to the beta on March 18th. But it'll also grant you some scans, boosts, and other cosmetic items in the game, because you like that shit. Yeah, put lipstick on that pig. Mm. The devs do stress that the game will be free to play when it's released fully, and that this beta is totally optional. I mean, it is your $20 after all, and your stats and shit will probably get wiped when it hits actual release, so do whatever you want. But it definitely looks cool, if not way too complicated for people as old as, as us to even understand. It just seems stressful to me. I don't know. Like, yeah, here, take stressful. all of the combined uh, things from all these games that I haven't fully even wrapped my head around and just cram them into one. Perfect. Life simulator. But well, we do have a young buck 
spring chicken, a little boy in our midst who knows gaming better than anyone. And he's here to review a brand new game that came out. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, you're reviewing Battlefield 2142? <laughs> Why? Yes. Is there a new version? No. All right. Whatever, man, it's your show. I'm gonna, All right. drink, I'm gonna drink a beer over here. Yeah. Alright, so Ricky got to talk about Dead Island, so I could talk about this. And it's also also a decade old, it makes sense. Alright, this is gonna be painful. Alright, so this week's review goes out to one of my favorite games of all time, and potentially the most influential game of my life, Ricky. Sure. Battlefield well, 21... How old are you, 15? <laughs> Battlefield 2142, released in October 2006 by a non-corrupt DICE Studios at the time, <laughs> 2142 took place in the future. It makes sense. Jesus Christ, boy. <laughs> That's just violent. That's, wow. Hey, tell people about your PS4 Dora. PS4 Dora, it's Brandon's. All right, so while prior Battlefield games were World, World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, and modern day with Battlefield II, and for the record, just a lot of people complain about this. Call of Duty 1 was actually released in October 2003, while Battlefield 1942 was actually in June 2002. No one gives a shit. Uh, people get really mad, like, Call of Duty came first. It didn't. So, 2142 has a special place in my heart because it truly... Is this, it's like Battlefield Advanced Warfare? Eh, kind of. Garbage. Because it truly showcased the power of the PC platform oh, by taking the PC. size and scale of battle... This is a really meaningful review to me. Yeah, that's why it sucks. Uh, damn it! The size and scale of Battlefield 2, but making it even more insane with the best game type ever created called Titan Mode, essentially taking- Titan Ball? E no! Each team has a massive, heavily armed flying warship above an already huge map. Missile silos would need to be captured by players to wear down the Titan shields. Then you board and raid the Titan and try to blow up, blow it up, core in the epic- this whatever. This doesn't sound as, uh, accessible enough to be successful. That's fine. Everything from the vehicles such as hover tanks to the nitrous boosting buggies to an assault rifle attachment that shoots airburst rockets. It's all great. Is to the ranking ambient horizon occlusion? <laughs> I don't think so. It is pretty old technology. Ranking and unlock system and war systems were all awesome and they're bigger, better than the polished Battlefield 2, which were already epic. So overall, Battlefield 2142 is still the best Battlefield game in the franchise and it's unfortunate Ricky for the win, mm. that the server system through GameSpy has since oh, shut no. down in 2014. Oh no. I am hopeful you that- You can't even play the game. You're reviewing you're, you're, a game that you can't even play. Here's your prize. What's this? Oh, thanks Sony. This, All right. is, this is not sponsored by Sony. If you want to sponsor us, Sony, you can call us, but give me this back. Oh, damn it. All right. Not sponsored. So anyways, EA, here's my cry and dice. In the coming years, I hope you see the errors in your way and Come create on. 2143. So I must give 2142, and I'm biased, one million out of ten. This is, a, this is the biggest waste of time I've ever seen. What? There, what, was it like a super hot zero out of ten? That game's great. Get over here, Elliot, we have a show to do. No, yeah, I gotta set up the cameraman. Camera. Here, the PS Fedora. Milady. 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 John Milady. PS4 is a great system. Pretty good. I've been playing it nonstop since I got one. I've been playing uh, Netflix and YouTube <laughs> on mine nonstop since I got it. Hey, you know what? I actually got, I actually got they, they lowered the price of view and added more channels, so go for it. I'm not gonna do it. Anyway, Shibby's an idiot and for whatever reason ruined this show with his review of an old game. Stupid. But since it's old, we can actually prove he's stupid by looking up a real review from a real gamer on Amazon and boy, were there a lot of one-star reviews. Can you guess why before, before you see it? Oh, this never mind. Is, you already saw. You already this saw. This is criminal. This right. one comes from JSS, who titled it "Warning: Spyware and Adware." The review says, "Absolutely the worst idea in years. Not only are you paying a premium price for this, but they are adding mandatory advertisements in game as well as installing internet monitoring spyware on your computer." <laughs> Of course, there is no warning on the box, and only <laughs> after you have opened it does the piece of paper telling you about it come to light. I returned my copy and refused to support this outright attempt at invasive spyware. What the fuck, Shibby? Why are you telling people to install spyware, you Orwellian fucking well, NSA shill over yeah. here? Yeah, you can't play the game anymore. It's fine. Yeah, but when you 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 gave a, a million out of ten to a game that yeah. spied on you. That and, kid's full of shit. No, there was hundreds of one star reviews talking about the spyware that was attached to the whatever them. game. Blame Game Spy. Their name says it all. Game Spy. <laughs> it's it's yeah. yeah, okay. Well, Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Tugs. I watch some real content over here. No. Or don't. No, just give me more Tugs. Yeah. Watch the Ghostbuster thing, it's good. Oh, should be like that. Root doot 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 doot. We're not invited up to their area of the office anymore. No. Banned. Caused too much trouble. Banned. Banned. Bye. Banned.